Elevators revolutionized housing and ushered in the era of the skyscraper, but even though they've been an integral part of plenty of progress, when things with an elevator go wrong, the only place to go is down. These are the world's deadliest elevators. On September 11, 2001, terrorists hijacked four commercial airplanes, and two of them were flown directly into the Twin Towers of New York City's World Trade Center. If you were alive at the time, you surely remember exactly where you were when it happened. Around 200 to 400 deaths were estimated to have occurred in the two buildings' 198 high-speed elevators, some stretching from the ground floor all the way to the 110th floor. Many elevator shafts were damaged by the initial impacts, and experts have determined that many of the elevator-related deaths that day probably occurred at that time. Some people were trapped in elevator cars that stopped working when they were damaged. For those unfortunate souls, they either had to wait until the building collapsed entirely or until the fires got to them. Experts later determined that the elevator shafts aided the fires in spreading, as a big elevator shaft is a perfect chimney for drafts that can make fire spread quickly through a large skyscraper. Approximately 100 people actually managed to escape from the elevators on that day. One of them, Christopher Young, spoke on the PBS series Nova about his experience. His was an especially close call, as the North Tower began to collapse one minute after he stepped out of the elevator. It's almost overwhelming how profoundly the world changed in the time that I was in that elevator. About 112 miles southwest of Johannesburg, South Africa, lies the small town of Orkney, it doesn't have a lot of residents, but it does have a huge gold mine known as Walt Reefs, which is the site of one of the deadliest elevator accidents in history. On May 10, 1995, a train used to transport materials to and from the mine went off the track, smashed through a safety barrier, and sped right toward an open mine shaft. Investigators later found that the mine had no safety devices in place to prevent trains from falling into the shafts. Furthermore, the hook attaching the train car to the rest of the train opened, causing the train to freefall into the shaft. After falling 1,700 feet, the train collided with a large elevator cage designed to carry around 100 people down the mine shaft. Then, both the train and elevator car tumbled nearly half a mile to the ground. The personnel elevator car, normally two stories tall, had been crushed down to a single story. It was filled with workers at the time of the crash. All 104 people on board the elevator were killed in the accident, although 400 workers working at the bottom of the shaft were evacuated safely. About 50 miles south of the Wall Reefs mine is the town of Velcom, which is also known for its gold mining. With gold mining, as in most forms of mining, elevator accidents aren't actually common enough to be a major concern. But what is a major concern is the buildup of potentially toxic or explosive gases. On August 31, 1987, at Velcom St. Helena Gold Mine, an explosion from just such a buildup ripped through part of the mine, killing 10 workers. This was caused by a buildup of methane gas, which is highly explosive. The explosion also severed the cable of a mining elevator. The elevator car was sent plummeting down a 4,521-foot pit. Afterward, it was estimated that the car fell about 1.4 kilometers, or nearly a mile, to the ground. All 52 workers on the elevator were killed, bringing the death toll to 62. 300 workers working down the shaft managed to escape, including one person dubbed the Solitary Rescuer, who managed to save several injured workers while hanging from a rope. This person's name isn't in any official sources, but he was awarded a well-earned medal for bravery. In March 2016 in Xiang, China, a group of elevator maintenance workers at an apartment complex returned from Chinese New Year, the biggest holiday of the year in the country. It's not uncommon for people to take off weeks, or in this case, an entire month, to celebrate. Before leaving for the holiday, the workers discovered that one of the elevators was broken, so they took it out of service and brought it to the first floor, intending to work on it after they returned. But when they came back and examined the elevator, they discovered something terrifying. They had mistakenly trapped a woman inside when they took the machine out of service. Although property managers said the maintenance team had confirmed the elevator was empty before shutting it down, it appears that this didn't actually happen. The woman had been stuck in the elevator the entire time and had starved to death as a result. When her body was found, her hands were badly injured, as it appeared that she had spent some of her time trying as hard as she could to pry the elevator doors open in a desperate bid for survival. Construction accidents are no joke, and many of them are preventable by following safety instructions. Over the last few decades, China's record in this regard has been less than stellar. On September 13, 2012, at a construction site in Wuhan, witnesses claimed that they saw a construction elevator loaded with workers rise very quickly to the building's top, followed by the cable snapping and the elevator car falling all the way back down. It dropped 30 stories to the ground, killing all 19 people on board. 
In the aftermath, investigators found that the registration plate on the elevator was still readable. The registration had expired three months before and was rated for a capacity of only 12 people. Local authorities immediately halted all construction in the province to perform safety checks. Despite those measures, construction continues to be the deadliest job in China, and there are signs that it's only getting more dangerous as the country seeks further rapid urbanization, according to data from China's Ministry of Emergency Management. Mining is already plenty dangerous on its own. Equipment malfunctions such as elevator accidents are another issue entirely. On October 10, 1932, England had one of its worst mining accidents, later dubbed the Lancashire Pit Disaster. Electric elevators were available at the time, but since running electricity to mines wasn't yet terribly common, miners relied on elevators powered by steam engines, such as the one in Bickershaw Colliery, a coal mine in Lancashire. When a safety device called the visor, designed to prevent the elevator's engine from winding the rope too tightly, malfunctioned in shaft number three, the rope tightened until it snapped. That sent an elevator with 20 men plummeting into the 14 feet of water collected at the bottom of the shaft. Because the elevator was designed as a cage, the workers were unable to escape and drowned, except for one man who happened to be close enough to the gate that he lifted it open and swam to safety. While any type of elevator can theoretically be the site of an accident, there are certain designs that are especially terrifying. One of them is called the Paternoster, which is based on the Latin for Our Father due to its resemblance to a string of rosary beads. They're inherently dangerous for people who don't know how to use them properly, which is why so few of them exist today. They can still be found in a few places in Europe, and you can even find videos of people riding in them. To picture one, imagine a regular elevator, but instead of a car with doors that close, it's a series of open, continuously moving booths, one side up and one side down. It's never just a step on and step off, it's always a bit of yeah. a jump. There's always a fear that you're going to fall it. through the gap. Yeah. <laughs> There's no button. You simply step into the phone booth size box. When you get to your destination floor, you step back out of the booth. Meanwhile, the interior elevator wall is visible the entire time. The potential problem is that getting into a booth too early means you might fall, and getting out too late can lead to serious injury, as body parts or entire bodies can and have gotten caught between the moving booth and the floor or ceiling outside. These elevators are so unsafe that Europe has actually passed laws banning the construction of new paternosters. Oh, and sometimes you kind of lose your nerve and just step back. You might think that as the decades rolled by, mining elevators would start to rely less on steam, but that wasn't exactly the case. On July 30th, 1973, one particular steam elevator experienced an overwind that sent people falling to the bottom of a pit. At the Markham Colliery coal mine near Chesterfield, England, an elevator cage carrying 30 workers fell 1,329 feet. Some of the workers on board survived, though 13 men died at the scene and another five died later at the hospital for a total of 18 fatalities. The surviving workers in the cage didn't get off easy, though, as they and one rescue worker were seriously injured. The elevator operator was reported to have gone into shock after the accident, even though he was very experienced in running such equipment. Upon further investigation, it was discovered that the elevator had 14 separate fail-safe mechanisms that were supposed to make a crash like this impossible but somehow each of the failsafes failed. The incident triggered a complete safety review of the coal mining industry in England, something that had actually been proposed by the Yorkshire Divisional Inspector of Mines and Quarries just days before the Markham Colliery accident. Chinese construction site safety standards have a reputation for being called into question, as the focus is more on getting things made cheaply and quickly rather than minimizing casualties. This is particularly clear in an incident that occurred in Fujian province on October 30, 2008. At 6.40 a.m. that morning, an elevator at the worksite for a residential building collapsed and killed a dozen workers. Despite being one of the deadliest elevator accidents in history, this story barely got mentioned in most news outlets. The few that did report on it made it a point to add a few lines noting that Chinese safety standards are woefully lax. It's actually pretty difficult to find more information about this accident because Western news agencies were given only the bare minimum of information by Chinese authorities. Thus, we simply don't know what caused the elevator to fall. It's also worth noting that in the very same week, another accident occurred at a construction site in Chongqing, at which 11 people died and another 12 were injured when a crane collapsed. One exception to the insufficiency of Chinese safety regulations is the construction in Hong Kong prior to its 1997 repatriation to China. Among many differences between British and Chinese rule was the fact safety standards were at least somewhat higher at the time, but that doesn't mean that Hong Kong hasn't seen its own share of accidents. 
On June 3, 1993, for example, an elevator collapsed at a Hong Kong worksite, falling 17 stories and killing 12 workers, one of whom was only 16 years old and working while on holiday from school. What's unique about this particular crash is how the elevator operated. Instead of cables, it used a series of gears whose teeth hooked into a vertical rail built into the building. It turned out that the elevator, which was rated to carry only eight people, had been overloaded, causing the mechanism to fail. While the safety brake was supposed to engage to prevent a complete drop, this also failed. Some of the workers were actually still alive at the bottom of the shaft, and firefighters rescued them using a specialized set of cutting tools that they coincidentally just received two days earlier. Sadly, though, these survivors later died at the hospital. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more grunge videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.